You have to tell your husband not to bring his ex-girlfriend to family functions. Remember, communication is the key. I'm Dr. Dorothy Stone, and you're listening to It's a Girl's World, a show for women only about men. And now let's take another call. Hello? You're on the phone with Dr. Stone. Hello, Dorothy. It's me again. Oh, my God. You! <gasps> you meddling witch, I'm back, and this is just the beginning of your nightmare. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no! <laughs> You must do something to stop this madman. As I've said before, Dr. Stone, <coughs> my hands are tied. It's only been threats. As a professional, I know that this type of personality will act on those threats. You wanted to see us, sir? No, but you might as well stay. Inspector Sledgehammer, Detective Duro, this is Dr. Stone. She's a psychologist. Oh, good for you, Captain. You finally sought professional help. Uh, no, Sledge. Dr. Stone has a radio talk show. It's really very good. I've listened to it. Yeah, typically you would. Some man, some lowlife has been making threatening phone calls to her on the air. Well, you don't have to worry, Doc. The only ones really dangerous with a phone are women. You don't understand, Inspector. This maniac hounded me in New York. Now he's followed me here. So he's a fan. He's threatened to kill me. But he's not a fan of yours. I had a pervert call me once. No, how'd you get him to stop? Change your number? No, I stopped dating him. You know, this man is merely a nuisance to you right now, but as a doctor, you must know, these people usually aren't violent. Normally, that's true. But this man's voice has all the characteristics of a classic sociopath. He's relentless, aggressive, and violent. Hey, I never called that show. <laughs> This is just like New York. The police there were powerless. They even tried a wiretap, but he never stays in the line long enough to be traced. Yeah, but this ain't New York. This is my city. And the only person who harasses people here is me. Is this man going to put me in more danger? Probably. Hammer, I want you to handle this by the book. Do you understand? I want you and Doro play the tapes of known crank callers who have recently relocated here. Mm. I'm sorry, Dr. Stone. That is the very best that I can do at this time. Typical. I didn't expect that you police would be able to find this man. No, all we have to do is find the door. Oh. <laughs> Dang it. If we could only pinpoint the general location where he's calling from, we could call in an airstrike. Then he'd never use the phone again. Neither would half the city. All right, here are all the voices of the relocated frequent offenders. Three of them. Only three? Yeah, it's not very popular anymore. Latest craze is obscene telegrams. See if any of these voices sound familiar. <laughs> what are you wearing right now? <laughs> okay, baby, I've got my shoe off. Would you believe I'm naked? Ralph Smoke Shop. Do you have Prince Albert in the can? Yes, we do. Well, then let him out. <laughs> no matter how many times I hear that, it always makes me laugh. I'm sorry, Doctor. It's obvious that your caller hasn't been apprehended. I don't believe you people. You're powerless. No one can help me. Well, may I suggest, since you live alone, to take some self-defense classes? Possibly a guard dog. Oh, come on, Doro. She doesn't need a guard dog or classes. Look, Doc, why don't you get yourself one of these puppies? You never have to feed it, and it doesn't scratch the door when it wants to go out. You really personify your gun. Thank you. Be careful, Inspector. The next thing you know, you'll be talking to it. Yeah, well... You know, what did that shrink mean, uh, that I personify my gun? Well, you treat your gun like a living, breathing thing. That's not personification, Duro. It's love. Ginger ale for the lady, black coffee for you. Hey, what is with this sissy umbrella? Sorry, Inspector. 
We ran out of the little American flags you like. We had an Ollie North happy hour. Good afternoon, ladies. This is Dr. Dorothy Stone, welcoming you to It's a Gal's World. Hey, don't touch that dial! You leave that woman's show on. Not for me, not for me, I don't care. I don't want, if she wants to listen to it, she's got some problems that she wants to solve. And no, I don't care about this bunk. Hello, you're not alone. You're on the phone with Dr. Stone. What machismo. Some crackpot's trying to kill her and all she cares about is helping people. She must have been a Miss America contestant. You really want to protect her, don't you, Sledge? Duro, I'm for anybody who can help you broads get over your problems. That way you can concentrate on what's really important. Serving men. Let's take the call on line two. What's up, Doc? Stop this. Please, stop these calls. So you tried to think on me again, huh, Dorothy? Going to the police? You need some discipline. I hate tattletales. Stop calling me. Leave me alone. Do you really think the cops can help you? Those pigs can't do a thing. They're just nabby, nabby milk suckers. No one out there can help you. Ciao for now. <laughs> I'm tired of that cretin polluting the airwaves. Sledge! Do me a favor. Don't shoot the radio. You're right. <laughs> Happy Duro? No, I can't think of anyone who'd want to harm Dorothy. To begin with, she's only been here for two weeks. Yes, we know that. He's threatened her on the air, and as her producer, I am really confused. Why? Our ratings haven't gone up. I would move immediately. No man or woman could possibly have a healthy relationship in Lexington, Kentucky. Inspector. That gun is making me extremely nervous. It's supposed to. It's not a room deodorizer, you know. <laughs> Just relax, Doc. You know what they say. Guns don't kill people. Yes, I've heard. People do. No, bullets do. <laughs> you think you're feeling nervous? Just wait till Golden Throat calls. After talking to me, he'll be so nervous he'll be afraid to call the time. Go ahead, jump on another line. We're back. Let's take the caller on line three. Guess who? It's the only real man in your life. Did you miss me, pumpkin? I'll take this call. All right, you radio rodent. I'm calling to bring some sunshine into your life. Cops haven't helped at all, have they? Yeah, well, this cop will. I'm Inspector Sledgehammer. You're looking for a real man, aren't you, Doc? Well, I'm your boy. You're not a man. If you were, you'd come out from behind that sissy little princess phone. Real men harass women face to face. I'll never stop, Trap. Yeah, well, if you don't stop, this will be the last sound you hear. Oh, <laughs> we'll be right back after this word from our sponsor. I don't know about this sledge. Oh, rest easy, Duro. This dirty mouth breather isn't going to bother the doctor anymore. I scared him away for good. The doctor is in no danger. <laughs> Hammer, this newspaper article, Cop Bows to Collar Collar. I hate it. I do too, sir. Alliteration is so pedestrian. Uh, I'm not talking about that, Hammer. I'm talking about your grandstanding over the airwaves. You disobeyed my orders. But, sir, I sent that punk running with his tail between his legs. On the contrary, Hammer. You probably succeeded in pushing that loony bird over the edge. Now there's a good chance he'll do a lot more than just call. No. No way, Jose. I know this bozo. He's a, he's a wimp. He's a prankster. We got nothing to worry about. This slime ball hasn't got the guts to leave his house to do something bigger. Captain, a report just came in. Dr. Stone's been attacked in her apartment. Unless he was pushed. If he was pushed, there's no telling what he would do. He must have been, must have been pushed. Somehow.
Major, hey, what are you dusting for prints? Oh, no. Just eating a powdered donut. Uh huh. Got some information from the doctor. Uh huh. She said the guy jumped out at her, but she didn't get a good look at him. Uh huh. She probably couldn't see through all the smoke. Uh huh. I've seen less than a hickory pit barbecue. Uh huh. She could have her own brand of sausage. Uh huh. So, Major, you find anything out? Uh huh. Uh, she doesn't see anything wrong with me and Mrs. Majoy taking separate vacations. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Dr. Stone, you feel free to call me if you need any more help. That'll be all, Charlie. Dr. Stone? Thank God you're here. Who? You, Inspector. Oh. I so rarely hear that. Uh, Dr. Stone, uh, you told one of our officers that you saw the man who attacked you? Well, yes, I. I sort of saw him. I. I heard that hideous laugh. I. I turned, and the next thing I knew, I came to and called the police. Uh-huh. Well, I don't get it. A guy threatens to kill you, then he gets a chance, and all he does is laugh at you. If he'd have been serious, right now you'd be a stiff. Sledge. Well, she wouldn't be stiff. She'd be stiffening up, though. It takes a little bit longer. Sledge! She'd be a corpse. Dr. Stone, would you come down to the station house and give our sketch artist a description of the man who attacked you? Right now, your body would be right about there, all outlined in white chalk, including the cigarette, probably. I wouldn't mind at all, Detective. Yep. Pretty soon, we'd have to call your next of kin. Hello? She's dead. That's what we'd have to say, because he'd be dead, of course. Then there'd be blood, probably, depending on how he killed you, and little pieces of flesh and tear. And uh, he wore thick glasses. I'm sorry, that, that's all I can remember. Is this him? Ah! It's probably him. That's him. I thought so. I'll never forget that hat. Thanks. I'm sorry. I, I can't possibly do my show today. Is there a private phone where I could call my producer and let her know? Yes, of course, right this way. Duro, I'm gonna hit the streets. Up until now, all I've been dealing with is a disembodied voice. I had nothing to, nothing to shoot at, nothing to hit, nothing to kill. But now I got a face, and I'm gonna pick up every wacko that looks like that. Sledge, there have got to be a hundred guys in the city who look like that. Yeah, and they're all guilty of unoriginality. Inspector Hammer, you've got a 518 on three. What's a 518? A phone call. Hammer, talk to me. Hey, stud, I thought you were protecting the doctor. I guess the only thing you shoot off is your mouth. Yeah? What about you, weirdo? Last night was just a preliminary. Tonight is the elimination. Where's the wall? All you cops are alike. You think because you passed the stinking civil service test, you're tough. Hey, there were essay questions on that test, pal. Mace them all. Who? So, gun freak, how does it feel to be helpless? How does it feel to be scum? Remember, tonight. Trace <laughs> this call. Way to go, Duro. Thanks a lot. Well, your writing is terrible. Well, it was like shorthand. I can't. Well, you'll never guess who just called. Not again. Not here. She got it the first time. I didn't even have to give her a hint. Well, what did he say? The usual. He's going to kill you tonight. Sledge. That's what he told me. Oh, my God. Yeah, just take it easy, Doc. I'm not going to let anything happen to you. But he said tonight. Look, it's obvious the guy's going to come back. This clown is just dying to get caught, and I'm the clown who's dying to catch him. So I'm going to spend the night in your apartment. You'll stay with Roe at her place. Sledge, I got a better idea. Why don't we both stay at your apartment? That's not a better idea. Sending her to Alaska is a better idea. But your apartment will be perfect. With all those booby traps, it's like a bunker. Nope. N-O-P-E. Never. Inspector, I would feel much safer at your apartment. Dr. Freeze! What? Be careful what you touch. Sledge has everything booby trapped. Anything could cause an explosion in here. Ah, one's environment is a direct reflection of one's personality. From the looks of this place, the inspector is a textbook case. Yeah. Well, as Sledge always says, man's home is his ammo dump. <laughs> Excuse me. The inspector is a very manly man, isn't he? Yes. He's a unique individual. Well, you two seem to have a good relationship. 
On the surface. Sledge is a stubborn, narrow-minded, opinionated, sexist reactionary. Does he know you feel this way? Oh, that's the way he feels about himself. I think he's an okay guy. So, doctor, who's the man in your life? Well, no one. I'm still recovering from a failed marriage. How long's it been? Fifteen years. Some people heal more slowly than others. Do you think you've developed a fear of men? I thought I was the doctor here. <laughs> oh. oh, I forgot to tell you, uh, Sledge doesn't approve of smoking. No tofu, no bean curd. These single women don't eat right. Sorry. Well, as long as you're here, I noticed a leaky faucet in the kitchen. Dorothy? Dorothy? Thought I heard the door. Guess you can't hear anything. Guess who, Dreambug? Darrow! Oh my God, Darrow, Darrow! Hey, let me have another. In all my years on the force, I've never been so frustrated. I know I could catch that slug. I just know it. Hey, Inspector. That loon is on the line again. That Natalie Nat Hammer couldn't help you, huh? Why don't you stop? Just stop. I'll stop. I'll stop by. I'll be your in-person guest. Why won't you just leave me alone? I'll tell a couple of amusing anecdotes, then kill you. We better get down there. I'm not coming with you. I think I just heard a familiar voice. <laughs> You're hearing voices? Darrell, that concussion really puts you in bad shape. I see you dead. What? Oh, my God. He's here. Help me. Oh, my God. Come on, Stone. Come on. You can do it. Fight back. Scratch it. You're a woman. Nag him. Use sarcasm. It'll kill him. I'm Inspector Sledgehammer. Anybody been by here recently? Well, my son came by the other day. First time in a long time. Because we were never that close. No, you old coot! I mean, in the last couple of minutes. Oh, no. All right, come on with me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh. oh. Miss Newman. Oh. Miss Newman, oh. you OK? Oh, uh -huh. Where is Dr. Stone? Oh. Thanks. Oh! Take care of her. Yeah. Dang rock and roll. Help! Inspector, 
have her. Is that you? He's going to kill me. Shut your mouth. The cops can't help you now. He obviously hasn't met us. Who are you talking to? Oh, I've nobody. I'm... Dr. Stone, you okay? Yes, but be careful. Here I am, big boy. Come and get me. Boy, I'd like to pound your face. If I could see you. Well, here I am. Inspector, look out! Time to do this, mutant. Oh, yeah? What's that? This! <laughs> okay, Doc, you can come out now. Inspector Hammer! Miss Newman, have you seen Dr. Stone? Yes. She's right here. Of course. An accredited psychologist masquerading as a man, making threatening phone calls to herself, and then sending the police on a wild goose chase. I should have known. You've had a case like this before? No, I saw it on an episode of Barnaby Jones. my order for the fourth time yeah but once again i came through i still can't figure out what could have snapped in dr stone's mind to make her act like that you probably know though don't you girl actually i do it would seem that stone's fear of men caused her to create a male persona of her own ultimately she was the object of her own paranoia classic case of schizophrenia are you telling me she actually wanted to be a man? That's right. That's my kind of woman. Yeah, but how was she able to do that deep, husky man's voice? Obviously, it was a result of her schizophrenia. No, Captain, you're wrong. It was her chain smoking. I knew that. 